while acknowledging conservation agriculture as key to promoting land regeneration and sustainable land use, and that it is essential for maintaining minerals within the soil, stopping soil erosion and stopping water loss from occurring within the soil. Intercropping and rotation is an important step in building soil infrastructure and allowing for an extensive build-up of rooting zones which allow better water infiltration. We grind, fine grind the samples into uh, two millimeter sieve particles. Then we have a, a standardized uh, mesh that sieve uh, of uh, two millimeter. Uh, because the technique that we are using to analyze the, the soil samples uh, require that the samples be two millimeter size particle. Then after sieving, then we load the samples on the petri dishes. Uh, those petri dishes are uh, uh, whereby we load the samples, we compress the samples to ensure that no air spaces are in. Then we move the samples to the spectral room. Basically here the soil uh, lab, we do measure the soil health of the soil samples. Uh, where the soil health requires, we measure the soil pH, uh, soil nutrients, and see whether they have any diseases. Uh, we, in collaboration with our, our sister department called Crop Health Nutrition, uh, whereby we need to know whether the soil is being infected by diseases or nematodes. So, according to a survey by the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, carried out in 164 locations recommended fertilizer to be used in each sub-county depending on the soil status. But under the government support subsidy program, the state through the National Cereals and Produce Board farmers get fertilizer without regard of soil type and status. While continuous use of diammonium phosphate has been blamed for damaging soils, but farmers have shown less interest in other types of the supplement, arguing it gives better yields. At the lab here we do soil nutrients, pH and cation exchange capacity of the soil samples. Uh, from there then we uh, advise the farmer that uh, your, particular, your soil has this deficiency of nutrients or reduce or add more nutrients uh, uh, fertilizer to your soil sample, the soil field. So here at the lab, it plays a vital role to the well-being of the final products from the field. Uh, basically, they are, what we are doing here, we have different types of uh, study that we do. We have soil health study, whereby we just try, want to know exactly each farmer's soil, how healthy that soil is in terms of nutrients, pH, and cation exchange capacity. According to the One Acre Fund, to correct the situation, farmers need to lime their soils to neutralize acidity and create better conditions for crops to perform well. However, most farmers have been hampered by lack of money to acquire the supplement. A ton of lime goes for 3,000 shillings, which is way beyond the reach of small-scale farmers, who are the majority. Then we have soil survey. This is whereby we want to uh, map up regions in Kenya to know exactly the type of soil in that particular region and the nutrients level in that particular region. So we advise wholesomely on that region. In Western Kenya, food insecurity and poverty has been identified as a major constraint to development. The arable land is about 0.5 million acres Maize and beans yields rarely exceed 0.5 tons per acre in smallholder farms. The low yields are mainly caused by soil acidity, trigger weed invasion, and high cost of farm inputs. Then we have another study called yield gap analysis. Uh, this is where we try to uh, figure out uh, the population versus the produce that the farmer uh, produces. Uh, since we know the farms are continuing diminishing, the size of the farms are becoming small year in, year out because of the population. So we want to forecast in five years time, in ten years time, will the produce, will the farmer, the small farms be able to feed that high population growth? 
So we have those studies here that we are doing at the lab. So from that, from the soil, soil plays a major role in feeding the population. So we have those studies undergoing in the laboratory and we have so many data and we have come up with our soil uh, analysis grip so that we can easily establish and find and want to know and advise the farmer the type of fertilizer to use, uh, lime application to apply, because the pH that we have uh, uh, analyzed and taken and measured, because we know most farmers used to plant sugarcane and their soils are acidic because of uh, uh, too much application of fertilizer. So we have analyzed that and known the pH level of particular areas and particular fields. The fact that the cycle of new fertilizers, new pesticides and new seeds have to be repeated yearly makes reliance on synthetic input not only costly for the average farmer but locks out subsistent farmers. But even for farmers who can afford artificial fertilizer, their use comes at a greater cost to the soil health which can be mitigated by employing integrated soil fertility management system in which inorganic and organic systems are used concurrently. In, uh, in relation to that, we have the cation exchange capacity. We want to know the exchange of anions and cations in the soil. How do they behave? So after analyzing the soil nutrients and knowing the amount of nutrients in the soil, now we can, uh, we can tell the amount of fertilizer the plant will take. Uh, one acre fund has come up with a scoop method of application of fertilizer because we have known that uh, the cations uh, can be uptaken by the roots. Uh, when you have too much application of fertilizer in the field, so it means the positive ions, cations will be much on the soil. So the plant cannot take because the plant root is negatively charged. So with that reason, we advise the farmers to use the scoop method. I want uh, to minimize the levels of uh, too much fertilization application on the farms. Uh, with that, uh, uh, we have uh, cation exchange capacity. It plays a very uh, vital role in uh, having best and good yields in the fields. Soil scientists insist total reliance on organic input is impractical for Kenya's main staple maize, which is grown on large swatches of land. At the same time, both scientists see organic farming as the best option for horticultural farmers, not just because they are grown on small plots, but they also fetch a premium on the export market. When One Wake Fund came up with the laboratory system uh, of knowing the, uh, the sample uh, health, uh, it has made farmers to have uh, to produce three times, two to three times fall of the produce that they were uh, having initially. Uh, with that reason makes the one acre fund uh, farmers all over Kenya, uh, they're the ones who are being recognized as the most uh, productive of farmers. So the lab acts as a, a backbone of one acre fund because one acre fund gives out uh, good in, uh, inputs that's uh, fertilizer, good fertilizer that has uh, all the nutrients and the required nutrients. It gives out the best seeds. So uh, with the three compilation of uh, best seeds, uh, good fertilizer and good soil health, it makes uh, One Acre Fund uh, to be uh, the leading uh, organization in Kenya and worldwide uh, in having the best produce to the farmers. The scientists say Kenyan farmers use 10 kilograms of fertilizer per acre currently. The national target is to raise artificial fertilizer used to 31 kilograms per acre if the country is to increase production and ensure food security and income at the farm level. However, the scientists argue that chemicals will leach into the soil, further poisoning it and reducing production. Instead, they propose the crop residue would be left on the farm by those without livestock. One eka fandua watu lipishi. Wana huwa wana tsaidia tu. Eh, sisi kama watu waho, wana tsaidia tu watu lipishi. While there are technologies for proper management of manure, there is a need to train farmers since poor management and farm yard manure renders it useless for nourishing the soil and increasing crop yields. 
What is needed is to work with the 47 counties on ways of harvesting the vast quantities of biodegradable waste from urban markets and households. Yeah, soil testing, uh, uh, mostly in Kenya or in uh, Wanaka Fund countries, uh, we, have, uh, we have a program that uh, we tell the farmers that let your soil be tested at least once every year, once, uh, before uh, the, uh, uh, the major uh, planting season. That is, uh, if it's uh, this before you plant in the month of early, early in the year, make sure that your soil is being tested. Then you know exactly what fertilizer to apply, the quantity of fertilizer or lime application, uh, because uh, soil testing is uh, uh, of good importance to the uh, farming before he plants. So that's being done uh, at least yearly, once in a year. When we came in, farmers didn't know. In fact, in the western region, uh, western part of Kenya, uh, soil testing is not uh, something that's being heard. So with one acre fund, it has now made farmers uh, to be eager uh, to know what this soil testing is all about. So one acre fund has rolled out that program and we do it freely. We don't charge any amount in soil testing. So this is a program that has just uh, been uh, done voluntarily with one acre fund. So more farmers are requesting for the soils to be tested. And we have, we are placing in place, uh, we are putting in place a mechanism of having each farmer soil come to the lab to be tested. Fertilizer subsidies may not be the long-term solution to increasing crop or food production because inorganic fertilizers do not add organic matter to the soil, but with careful use of organic resources, they can achieve the dual function of adding nutrients and organic matter to the soil with subsequent improvement of soil health and quality. Philip Keitang for the next frontier.